we're going to carry on with the rest of that question. Now, 2.116, just like we were doing before, we're just going to write the get method. This one's also quite a lot to do. If you see, the previous one was three or six points, and this one's 12, so there's a lot more to do here. We have to get that size code and then give the cost per print. Now, they want us to get the print cost that will return the cost of the number of copies for the print. So we not only need to get the size code, we also need to get the quantity. Because obviously if they pay 1 Rand 65 per print and they buy 10 photos, then we have to take 1.65 times about that 10. So we need to take that. There's a little discount that we've got to work out as well, which we'll work out at the end. So let's just go and do the function quickly. Again, we're returning a value, so that's going to be part of our public functions that we've got. So we're going to have a function, and they asked us to call it get print costs. And that's obviously going to return, I'm going to be careful here, remember we return a value which is obviously in some sort of currency, so we're not returning an integer or that, we're returning a real in this case. You could specify currency as well, that's also an option that you could use. So we're going to make a current real, there we go. Now, I'm going to have some sort of variable which I'll return, which will store the cost, I'm going to call it f cost. And that's going to be of type real. I'm going to store the value in here. And here I'm going to use the case statement. Um, we used the if statement last time, so let's use a case statement. Now, my cost is based on the size code over here. So let me use that quickly over here. So if I go and get the field, and it's pick size, that is the field that contains what it is. And remember, of, a case statement has an of, and I always do this, put in your end at the end of the case statement because a lot of times you forget that. So I'm just going to say end of case, just a little note there. So I'm aware that that's the end of the case. Now, if it is an S, then what we want to do is we want to take the, um, the pick quantity that we got and we want to multiply that by the value in the table that they gave us, which is 1.65. So 1.65. If it's not that, then if it's a J, then we want it to be the pick quantity times it by the value in the table, which in this case was 2.65. Just to double check. Yes. If it was a 5, then the pick quantity, oh, forgot my code on there must be multiplied by the value of 4.75. You can just double check this from the table. And the 4 would be exactly the same. And in that case, it's 11 Rand 50. Oh, pictures are expensive. Okay, so there we go. That's our case statement. Very easy. Now, what I would normally have done is straight after this, I would just say result is equal to... Now, I made a big mistake here. I haven't actually, I've just done a calculation, but I haven't stored it anywhere. Remember that variable I created? I'm actually supposed to store it in there. So I'm actually going to say fcost is assigned the value of that. That was very silly of me, but obviously I can just, uh, luckily I picked up that error before I ran it, otherwise I would look very foolish. So the fcost is equal to that. Now, normally I could just say result is equal to fcost, and that would have been done. But remember, there was something about a discount. So let's go look what it says there. A 10% discount is given on the total amount for the print where more than 15 copies of a particular photo order are ordered. So it says more than 15. It doesn't mean 15, so we must remember it's greater than 15, not equal to 15. So they get a 10% discount. So how do I work out a discount? Now before I return that result, I need to actually go and say, you know what, if that if pick quantity if the number that they order, if that's greater than 15, then they will get a discount. Then I can actually change the F cost variable. And I can say F cost is going to equal to itself times. Now, there are lots of ways of working out discount. You could obviously do, there's a very long way where you go equals to F cost minus, and then we work out 10% of, which is times of the amount you could have done that or you could think well if they get a 10% discount then they're only paying 90% so then they're only then the F cost is now equal to 
90% of that amount, or you could have gone 0.9. There are lots of mathematical ways of doing it. But basically, I'm changing F cost to only 90% of its value if it's greater than 15. If it's not, then I'll just leave it what it is, and then I'll return the F cost. Now, that should work. Okay, now to 2.1.7. Now we must get pick size code. That simply, as you can see by the market occasion, simply returning that character. Very easy. Again, we go up to our public fields. It seems like we're just making tons of functions here. And we said that we're going to call it get pick size. Let's just see if it was that. Get pick size code, sorry. Get pick size code. And that's obviously going to return a character in our case. Okay. So we go in right and simply we're gonna say result is gonna be that field. F Pixars. That easy. Only problem with when you do oop question when you're creating the the object like this is that you can't actually test those those functions and then until you get to the second part of the question. So let's just hope it works. We can always come back and make changes. There's a chance that I have made a mistake, but we will come and correct them when we get to the second part of the question. So 2.1.8, get the pick quantity. That is just returning the number of, of photos that were ordered in that in that order. So that's again a very simple question. We go up to the top. Function get pick quantity I think that was the name that they wanted there and remember that's going to return an integer of how many values or how many photos were taken in that order and we're simply returning that field which is f pick quantity easier these this is where you can score big marks in the in the object question is that first part if you understand how to do this it's literally the same style every single time you can get easy marks the last question here, 2.1.9, it's asking us to create a two-string method. There's normally some sort of two-string method at the end, and they want us to create some sort of blah, 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 all the details in one string. So we return some sort of string, and it must be for that. Now, although we've seen it for every single one, please, again, like I said in the previous video, you're only working with one record of data, only one order. The other program, the, the main program part that uses this class will obviously do some sort of for loop or repeat loop that will go through the text file and display this. But we only need to handle one order. We don't need to worry about getting anything from the text file. We just handle one string. So let's create the string function again. You would have noticed again in our, um, not over there, sorry. With all our functions that we've created, you'll notice that they actually, besides the constructor, there's been no parameters needed because all the information that we needed was inside here. And that's majority of the case. There will be a slight chance that they could ask something in another exam where you've got to put a value that comes through as a parameter. But it's not it's not very often that they do that. So we're going to call this to string, and that's obviously going to return a string. Okay, now how do they want us to look? Well, they want us to make the order number. So we're going to return a string. I'm probably going to be best if I make a variable called, it's called S line. I like S line. And that's going to be a string that we're going to construct here. So S line is going to start off with the order number. Now just remember it's a string. Order number is already a string. So that's easy. So if order num is a string, perfect. Then Remember, we've got tabs over here, so I'm going to have to put in a hash now for my tab. And then the next bit, if you remember, read here, it's the print number. If print number now, if I remember correctly, that was an integer. So because I'm dealing with a string here, I'd have to go int to string f print number. Just remember, we've got the right field names. f print num, so remember that, f print num. Then we're going to obviously add our hash nine for the next part of that. Now let's go next. What else do we have to add? It's in the diagram. Print number, then print quantity. That's also a integer. So we're going to go int to string if pink quantity plus another hash nine. Oh, for, nearly forgot my plus sign there. Remember, you need to add the string together. And then let's do one more, and then I'll reconstruct the string here. And then after print quantity is picture size description. 
Now, that comes from the picture size string. If you remember correctly, it's the standard jumbo. So we actually want to get the actual string, which we, as you see, we created that earlier in the, the OOP question. And the reason why you create all those, those functions is because you're obviously going to use them. So we're actually going to use that function that returns the string, pick size string. So in this case, we just have to call get pick size string, just like that. And because it's already a string, we don't need to do any conversions. I'm going to end it over there. And then just to run our space, I'm going to say sline is equal to whatever's in sline already that we constructed at the top. And now we're going to add on to it. This is what you can do if you've got to run out of space. Now, obviously, we need to add a hash 9 again because we didn't add a hash 9 at the last one. And after the string, we need to put the file name. Okay, so we need to get the file name. We did have a file name uh, function, if you remember correctly. Get pick file name. Was there get pick file name? There is no get pick file name because we can, as I said, we can just use the normal field that we've got over there. So we've got f pick file name. That's already a string, so that's fine. Gonna plus another hash nine. Now, what's the next thing on the list? File name. Oh, now we need to put the cost in, the file cost. Remember, we've got our own f uh, function that we designed, that we developed, that will return the costs. They get print costs. That is a real, so I would have to do some sort of float to string f. I'll keep it like that. And that is get pick, I think it was pick costs. Should be get pick costs. Just to confirm it, get print cost, sorry. That's why it didn't come up. Get print cost. And we'll make it FF currency. And make it what? Comma 8, comma 6, comma 2. I don't know. Give two random numbers there. That should be fine. And then we're going to plus. The next bit, it's quite tedious this doing all this, but it's for lots of marks. You can double check it. 10 marks, that's lots of marks. So we're getting good, easy marks here. The file size in bytes. Now I'll just double check what it looks like in the diagram. Okay, so it must be file size with the word bytes at the end of it. So remember that. So we're going to have to obviously put a hash 9 here. And we're going to plus get file size in bytes. Now that will return an integer. So we have to do into string and go f or get file size in bytes. There we go. And then we're going to put a plus space the word bytes at the end. Okay. So that looks pretty much done. Only little thing is this little thing at the end here, this little hash that we've got to put at the end, that just tells me if the discount is applicable, it means they've got more than 15, they get a discount. So I need some sort of indicator for that. So I'm going to create another string called, I'll call it indicator. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, you know what, if the pick quantity, not size, quantity, if that is greater than 15, then obviously they get a discount. Then I'm going to say, then indicator is going to equal to that hash. And if it's not, else indicator is equal to your blank space. And then all I'm going to do is going to add that at the end. So irrespective of whether they get the discount or not, let's just double check if there's a if it's just a space. That should be fine if we just put a space at the end. And then we say plus indicator. So irrespective of whether they get a discount or not, if they get a discount, that'll be a hash. If it's not a discount, it'll be a space, which means they won't see anything. So it should look something like that, we hope. We will only obviously test this when we run the main program, but we can come back and make checks and check the errors and correct things that are not done properly. Okay, so we've done the first part of the question. We're now going to move on to the second part. We actually use this class in that part in that second part in the main program.